like what you do and then you will do your best no true words have been ever spoken by these words by Katherine Johnson in this podcast series created and hosted by Rahul Suri uh, of the Russell Book Club we will be bringing you inspiring stories and journeys of people who love their chosen profession and are successful at what they do namaste i'm sanash verma your host for this evening and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest of the day miss kopil sharma who has many hats with ease she is a marketing and business development professional an advocate for mental health awareness her agency arc light uh, helps founders build their uh, their personal brand uh, on linkedin and also helps companies with brand building and marketing strategy thank you so much for joining us today ma'am thank you so much for the introduction sana and hi rahul thank you so much for having me here today it's an absolute pleasure to interact with both of you uh ma'am you have a very interesting career path so what made you switch career from finance to marketing and uh, who were the people who influenced you in making your choices okay um so you know i have grown up in a very middle class family okay and uh, my major source of inspiration throughout my life has been my grandfather he worked in the government sector and i've seen him spend a lot of time uh in you know in the stock market so our post my 12th when i had to make a career choice okay you know what do i want to pursue ahead uh finance seemed like the perfect choice for me and it was and it was also of interest to me at that point in time so when i graduated i worked with two of the most leading financial firms in the country as an investment advisor to high net worth individuals while i loved what i did and i was really good at it right that job helped me understand that okay there are certain skill sets and strengths that i have that can be used uh in a better manner okay and also um i chased the feeling of contentment and fulfillment at that time which i wasn't getting from the career path that i had chosen so i decided to take a step back reanalyze in life where am i headed is this what i want to do that's when i boiled down to the skill sets that i was good at which was communication people skills and writing now marketing was not like a natural choice to which means i had to go and explore out there that what was working out for me and i started off with doing internships unpaid internships um with organizations less aspired for her i took up courses in marketing okay to understand if this is the role that i want to go in moving forward and that's when i got some clarity and another way of going about it was you know talking to people in the same professional world right so there were other alternate career choices that i had also considered at that point in time but after doing the thorough analysis i understood that marketing is meant for me uh but i gained more clarity on what i want to do within marketing while working right so you can only gain so much experience through you know your courses the real knowledge is gained when you are actually on ground and doing the work uh so now that i am leading you know i have my own agency right now and i've picked out a niche for myself that came from an experience of the last 3 years okay where i have worked with i have done every job role possible in the field of marketing to understand that you know hey this is something that i like and want to work with so it was a switch uh it took time um someone who influenced me deeply was my grandfather to be very honest um uh he made you know i mean he's not there you are with us anymore but what i do remember and i'm going to take that with me always that never be scared to fail okay never be scared to experiment in your life uh you just have one so we are often told that, you know sit down better your choices ke saath and oh you know don't take the unconventional path but but same i was like you know you can take the unconventional path because you don't have to walk the same road that everyone is your journey is your journey so i think these so that was how my switch came into place and he is the person that inspired me the most and is still inspiring that's so inspiring ma can you please tell us more about what bloomer does and 
where did you get this inspiration to make productivity tools for neurodivergent individuals? Um, so at Bloom, so Bloom was started two years back. It was it's a lockdown baby. The entire idea came in twenty twenty, and it's come from a place of personal struggle. To be very honest, a problem that I wanted to solve for myself. Um, lockdown has been difficult on all of us. One of the major things that took hit was your time management. Okay, able to understand what you want to do. Your choices were impacted, right? And being someone who like grown up with dyslexia. And who has who had who faced immense mental health challenges? I just understood that there are not enough tools in the world to help me declutter my brain and just understand the voices in my head. Okay, that is something that I needed particularly help with. So with Bloomer, we are making productivity tools and solutions, um, which are directed towards helping individuals, particularly people who have ADHD, autism, and dyslexia, manage their time and their day-to-day life better make better healthy choices in their life um so we are currently started out with journals um journals which will help you uh break down your day to day schedules build your habits better uh understand what you want in life so we often confuse with wants and haves those are clear difference that people should know right and we are often asked to ignore our wants so i with my idea of humor is to make sure that people are embracing what they want to do more of it and do it well. And uh, the struggles that I have faced growing up, I don't want, I mean, if I could help other students and people to, uh, you know, break them, break that down for themselves as well and get better at it. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So that is the idea of humor. We eventually also want to venture into uh, providing trainings and workshops for workspaces to be more inclusive of people who are neurodivergent. Okay, uh, since I have a five year, I've spent five years in the corporate world. I also understood that a lot of people are not accommodative of that. It can be as simple as having, uh, you know, audio visual learning uh, modules given to people who are dyslexic, or it can be as simple as having uh, an AI tool or uh, to transcribe the meeting when you are having. You know, uh, so that someone else who's unable to catch up, uh, like I was unable to catch up with the meeting flow that used to happen. And I was like, okay, it's very difficult for me to interpret. I'm a slow reader. I, it, I takes time for me to process information. Those accommodations were not present. More importantly, they were not even uh, like given importance to that. Okay, this person might take time. So my idea with Bloomer is to change that landscape and make workspaces more inclusive and also provide tools and solutions to people that can help them lead a better life and a healthier life. Uh, this is awesome, Ram. Um, so, uh, a very busy professional life, setting up your own agency, um, along with a leading diabetic chef. Uh, you have many roles to play. So, how do you manage time like, for all this while keeping your mental health in check? Thank you for the question, Sana. That's a great question. So, I think uh, one of the main things that I've realized with time is to understand that when you're not supposed to overwhelm yourself, okay? We often, like, it, though the hustle culture has been promoted a lot, right? That ends up, like, individuals end up taking so much on their plate, they overcome it, and then they under-deliver. Okay? Since I have, like, 10 things on my plate, one way that I am managing my time right now is to make to understand that okay this is my capacity to work and being okay with it at my own pace and at my own in my own time apart from that like uh giving you like a few tips that I use I often I always make sure that I have buffer time in my deadlines always if a deadline if I know that something is going out to a client let's say on, on next Friday, like, okay, I am, like, well, I'm going to take like five days to do it. I will give the client that saying that, hey, you know, I'm, it's going to take me seven days. That buffer time allows me to, you know, accommodate a lot of things, my mental health, any, uh, any circumstances that come in, right? Uh, life happens on a daily basis. So always give buffer time to your deadlines. Okay. That is one thing. Another thing is under commit. Do not overcome it that, okay, I'm going to be able to do this also, this also, a thousand things. Know what is your potential. 
because sometimes over committing will just complicate things and because and when then you under deliver it's going to make an impact on your you know profile your reputation so it's okay to under commit and over deliver that is something which is still acceptable okay so this is what works for me and another thing to manage my time is the pomodoro technique so i make sure that i work in like you know in 25 minutes i work for 25 minutes i take a 5 minute break i work for 25 minutes and then i take a 15 minute break and this technique has really helped me manage my time more efficiently and i have broken up my days into like four halves okay so like morning afternoon evening and night so i break that up on my journal and i say that okay these are my tasks for the morning and then i try to understand that okay what is my body feeling because hamare sabke paas na bahut casual cheez hoti hai bolne ke liye mera man nahi kar raha ya mera man ye kar raha hai okay so you need to understand ki yaar what is this man man ke sath to tumhari deadline chalenge nahi man ke sath kaam nahi hoga but you can use this feeling of want man kar raha hai to your advantage and understand okay how is your body working so in the morning i'm really fresh that is when most of my ideas come in so i'm like okay morning is scheduled for writing okay by the afternoon you have lunch okay it's become your body becomes a little lethargic lethargic you're in a low mood you that is when you take up tasks that don't require a lot of cognitive ability right that is how you divide during the evening then you can take up tasks like that's my creativity time that is when i do my strategy work and uh, you know building my strategy making creative writing briefs those are things that i do at that time and then i evenings i schedule for uh, let's say planning the next right or replying to people or at night okay reply to people and make sure that my next day is very well planned so uh i think this is something which is very important this is at least i do and second is understanding yourself like if your everything is going to change when you just take a pause and listen to those voices in your head and understand okay what does what do you want what do you want everything that what do you want can change everything or it's the answer to almost everything uh out there So I'm listening to myself. Listening to yourself is the most important thing that you can do, and then making it work to your advantage. Um, so that is what I do. And apart from that, how do I keep my mental health in check while having so many things? I heavily journal. I journal every morning. I make sure that I declutter my head, my head space. So I call it like my brain dump, and then I make it into like I divide. I use the Eisenhower matrix, uh, to work ahead. so when i brain dump okay there are few things that i that need to be done right now okay that require immediate importance what the things that i can delegate okay what are the things that i have to let it go and forget so basically following that particular matrix has really helped in my day to day life and then another way to cope up cope up with my mental health is talking to your friends please reach out for help please do not isolate yourself go talk to people out there it is very important Okay, find that one person. Talk, communicate. I think communicating and expressing how you feel is something that people don't do enough, and that is something that really impacts your mental health. So, communicate. It might be hard, but talk. It's because no one can help you till the time you don't tell them how you feel. That is the basic rule of mental health. Basic rule. Because we can't read mind. So, if you if you are in a bad space. If I am in a bad space, you should be. I pay. I reach out to people. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not feeling the best. Can we just have like a quick chat? Or hey, if there's no one around me, I journal. I put my thoughts down. Okay, because when you put them down and when you read them again, you understand. Okay, uh, is this even making sense? The minute you start journaling and put your thoughts down, you know that half of them are just things that your mind is saying. You have seventy thousand thoughts in a day. Okay, and not all of them are supposed to be heard or listened to. So I think journaling. and talking to and having my support system is two things that i heavily rely on when it comes to keeping my mental health in check and yeah that's about it mom this is so inspiring uh, so and with this uh, we bring the session the session to an end thank you so much corporal ma for joining us and also our audience for joining us do visit the sh- social page of Russell Book Club please like follow and share and support us thank you